Hi, I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Julie, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Jeff, and I'm the 2020 recipient of the Nobel Prize in Cocktail Biophysics. I'm kidding, I'm just a bartender. I've never had a Bloody Mary, so I'm very excited to try it, because I've only heard mixed reviews, and I'm making a mixed drink. The last time I had a Bloody Mary? Hmm, what day is it? No, actually it was Saturday. I have them generally on the weekends when I'm having a lovely, luxurious brunch. So for my Bloody Mary, I'm going Italian. I'm gonna do a Southern Italian, kind of coastal refreshing version of the drink using all Italian ingredients. We're gonna start with our tomato base. And I personally love V8. I don't like tomato juice, flat, bland, blah. I'm liking the simplicity of this drink. All you have to do is add the tomato juice. I gotta be honest, that's for amateurs. Instead of using tomato juice or a Bloody Mary mix, we're going to use the reserve juices from a can of Italian San Marzano tomatoes. I buy the low sodium because you know, health, eh, about two cups. I feel like that's a lot. I'm gonna go with four. I like to just poke a tiny hole with my thumb into the tomato so that the entire thing doesn't burst when I'm squeezing it, and then pour the remaining juice. I'm not the biggest fan of tomato juice, unless it's like tomato soup. You got tomato soup? Let's warm this up. <laughs> so I'm gonna just stir this, and we'll get that combined with the juices that just strained through the tomatoes. So now we have the tomato base for the cocktail. This seems very simple, but remember, this is a base. This is our jumping off point. For the alcohol, we're gonna go with some tequila. That's what makes it the Maria. The traditional base is vodka, but you can swap the vodka out for tequila and then you have a Bloody Maria. I like Tito's vodka. It's smooth, it's nice, it's fun, it's affordable. I kind of steep my vodka in a little teeny sliver of Scotch Bonnet. This is super, super spicy, and I don't want to kill anyone. And I am simply going to put that one little sliver in the bottom of my shaker. So I'm gonna be using vodka as the alcohol base in my Bloody Mary, but I'm going to infuse a couple of Italian flavor components in there. I'm gonna be adding rosemary, and I'm going to emphasize the rosemary's floral quality by adding some pink peppercorn. And really all you need is time now. To speed up the infusion process, I'm going to use a sous vide machine, which gets this two to five day process done in about two and a half to three hours. I've set the sous vide machine to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So now all we have to do is wait. So I'm just going to stare at this machine. Oh, you're gonna ask me how much vodka? A lot. Uh, we're gonna go with, I can't tell the out. Who am I kidding? I'm gonna fill it to the top regardless of how big it is. Just let this sit and infuse and impart all that heat, good heat. All right, it's been three hours and this infusion is done. Yeah, the rosemary's given the vodka infusion a really nice color, which is a sign that it worked. But we should give it a taste and make sure. And you can just smell the rosemary right off the bat, which is great. Amazing, amazing. Time is it? Happy hour somewhere. So instead of drinking this whole thing straight, we're going to strain the rosemary and peppercorns out of the infusion. And there we have it, a beautiful rosemary pink peppercorn vodka infusion. This is looking pretty good. This is smelling pretty good. So next up, flavorings. The first thing we do is cut a little knob of this horseradish. I can't tell you exactly how much I use because I like things over the top spicy. Instead of Worcestershire sauce, I'm going to be using fresh garlic, roasted red peppers, and anchovy paste. So I'm gonna put all the ingredients for my pesto sure sauce, you know, like an, it's like an Italian Worcestershire, into the blender and blend it up. So into the blender with 200 grams of jarred fire roasted red peppers and two Calabrian chilies with a tablespoon of the olive oil that they're packed in. Just gonna take off the stem first. One clove of garlic, smashed. Uh, about 20 grams of this anchovy paste. You really don't taste the fishiness itself. It's more just the kind of funk that you get from Worcestershire sauce. And always try to get mm, fresh horseradish. 
there's so much extra heat that using fresh horseradish brings out that you just don't get in the jarred prepared horseradish and you want that little bite. It's really hard to say fresh horseradish. Say that five times fast, you're better than me. Fresh horse, fresh, fresh horseradish. Horseradish. The great part is that if you have this horseradish root, you can trick people into thinking that it's like fresh Parmesan and put it on their pasta. <laughs> it's like when you at those Italian restaurants with the Parmesan cheese. That's what I do because I hate my friends. Looking for about uh, 20 grams here, which is a nice solid handful. Next, I add my Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? <laughs> Worcestershire. I need an adult. Fresh horse rock All right, so put the top on and blend well. You start at the low setting, work your way up to high. Great, and we're looking for a really uniform consistency here. This is just transferring this into a smaller vessel for easy measuring. Next, we're gonna put the juice of one whole lime. lime. And you wanna make sure you didn't drink any of that tequila beforehand, because then you would have one hand. And then I'm just gonna squeeze it in. That's why they got me this. <laughs> squeeze. First time using this thing too. Like I'm from the Caribbean. We just squeeze things with our hands. That's how I was taught growing up. Just use that spoon. No one has really criticized me, but I know it's not the quote unquote pro way to do things. Next, we're gonna go with some celery salt and then we're gonna crack some black pepper, pepper into it. And we definitely can use the salt now. This is pink Himalayan sea salt. So we're gonna add five drops of hot sauce. So I guess we're doing 15 now. Somebody count that. Write it in the comments. The lemon and cucumber are gonna be muddled into the drink and this will be nice because it will both get a little bit of lemon essential oil kind of muddled out of the drink into the shaker and you get a real fresh lemon hit. And then you also get the juiciness of the cucumber right before you shake that drink. Next up, ice. If you have great booze and great ingredients and then you just add kind of smelly refrigerator freezer ice to your drink, it just kind of takes away all the great work that you just did. I don't know how we became so obsessed with ice. I'm using water that has been frozen. Actually, I have my water that is filtered into my refrigerator from Fiji Islands. This slab of ice was made in a professional facility. Most major cities have ice companies that make ice for cocktails and they'd be more than happy to supply you with a slab for your home. I live in the world. I have an ice maker. I use the ice that comes out of my ice maker. Hmm. The first thing I'm gonna do is let the slab temper at room temperature for about 45 minutes and then we can cut some ice. I think I put about four cubes in there, and that's gonna be it. You don't need a lot of ice for a Bloody Mary. Save it for a margarita. I'm a margarita girl. So this has been sitting out for 45 minutes, and it is wonderfully clear. Now we can score the ice without the ice kind of breaking into unpredictable shapes. It's just easier to manage. And you just need to get down there a little bit so that the ice has a good fault line. And then I'm just going to tap lightly on the knife up and down the ice until it breaks apart. From this smaller piece, you can cut this down to size to use in all different kinds of drinks. So this is about all the ice we're gonna need. And we're going to hand crack these little chunks into irregular shape sizes right before we shake the drink. So now all we have to do is mix it up. I just love to make my Bloody Mary mix in this pitcher because it reminds me of the times that I spent in France. Café du Paris, as you can see. So we're gonna start by muddling our lemon wedges and cucumber slices. Ounce and a half of our San Marzano tomato juice. Just a few really strong presses will do it. So we're just gonna add three quarters of an ounce of our Pestisher sauce. Pinch of kosher salt and two ounces of our pink peppercorn rosemary vodka infusion. So now I'm gonna use this contraption, which could be used to like hold off those people that judge you as you drink at 12 o'clock noon or to mix up your Bloody Mary. Always stir it up right before you put it into your shaker. Pour it to the top. Shake gently. You're not dancing, you're swaying. And now the ice. I like these kind of big shards. Inevitably, a couple of them will kind of stick out of the glass. It'll look like a glacier and it'll be all cool and stuff. This is perfect. Right up to the top of this shaker, you know that you'll have enough ice to fill your glass. I'm excited because just because it's not appealing to the eye doesn't mean it's not appealing to the stomach. That's philosophy. We're gonna shake this drink on the cracked ice. Just 
10 to 12 nice firm shakes. I think that should be enough because everything feels nice and chilly. So we're starting off with a very chilled glass. This is, again, about making your drink as cold as possible, as long as possible, and pour. Ice is floating up in all of its little weird pieces. We're in good shape, now we just have to garnish it. So in front of me, you can see my pickled veggie bar. Don't know where to start. The first thing I'm going to do is rim my glass with salt. The way I like to do that is just rub the lime around the lip of the glass and boop, 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 boop. Now we're gonna add two cubes of ice. This is really where bartenders and chefs like to get creative. I've seen people have entire grilled shrimp skewers. I've seen people skewer double cheeseburgers into a giant Bloody Mary and stick them in. I have had Bloody Marys with umbrellas and burgers and fries and all kinds of things coming out of them. I like to keep things simple, just a blowtorch. I'm going to flame a rosemary sprig so the aroma hits you right as you're drinking it and it also brings out the rosemary and the vodka. So I'm gonna go with the pepperoncini first and I'm gonna rip it open to expose some of the juices. I'm gonna grab the caper berry I'm also going to take up this step. I want to put the pickle in, and you want to dip it in like your toes at the beach, or just jump in. A Bloody Mary is not a Bloody Mary unless it is ridiculously overstuffed with things. We're going to put a stalk of celery. And then I want to grab one of the Spanish olives. Stab it. Wow. That's a little kick. And I'm going to finish it with another Spanish olive. And you're but Julie, you haven't put the booze in yet. No, I have not. I am dressing the set before the actor arrives. This is a staple in the Jamaican household. It would be a shame if I didn't add this okra. And you see, and it, it worked. Black pepper right on the ice glacier. A drizzle of nice aged balsamic vinegar. And a rosemary sprig. But first. You're not allowed to enjoy yourself while this is happening at all. Totally chill, just an incredible smoky drink. We've got a fancy schmancy metal straw. And what I'm gonna do is impale one, two, three blue cheese stuffed olives. Just one more little sway, not shake, and pour. And this is my Bloody Mary, AKA my Bloody Maria. My lunchtime Bloody Mary. And here's my Bloody Mary. All right, we're done, so it's time to taste. Mm. Oh man, that, that is terrific, is what that is. I think we're just in two different places in our lives. I don't think we're on the same page spiritually, um, but it's not the drink. It might just be where I am. So I'm just gonna need this to exit stage left. Mmm, that's good. I'm chewing, so that means it's healthy. And I'm sipping, that means I'm gonna be drunk soon. What could be so wrong? I'm kind of proud of myself. I'll say it, there's this really excellent acidity and just a little bit of a kind of a savory twang and it's from that anchovy. So what'd Stephen think of the uh, Bloody Mary? Do you like it? <laughs> Thumbs down. A Bloody Mary is a chemically complex drink that covers a wide range of tastes and flavors. It can be slightly sweet, salty, sour, and savory. You can make it exactly as you like it. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Steven used classic tomato juice in his Bloody Mary. Tomato juice is a weak particulate gel made up of pulp particles suspended in a liquid that contains sugar, salt, and other compounds. The compounds are prone to separate over time as the result of gravity acting on weak bonds between the components. You don't want your juice to separate in your Bloody Mary, so mixing just prior to drinking is key. I'm not the biggest fan of tomato juice. Julie used V8 in her Bloody Mary. V8 is a tomato-based juice with added vegetables like carrots, celery, beets, and spinach, and added fruits like blueberries, mangoes, and strawberries. V8 can't afford me, so they are not paying me. 
V8 is red, like classic tomato juice, because of the presence of dominant antioxidant pigments lutein and lycopene. Jeff crushed and strained his San Marzano tomatoes, which are naturally higher in sugar than other tomato cultivar varieties. Hand crushing gently releases tomato juices from the tomato cells, while partially breaking cell walls into pieces. These become suspended in the tomato juice and block its flow, which is how the juice becomes viscous. I'm very used to having a sieve in front of me. <laughs> Julie added spicy heat from the capsaicinoids and a thin sliver of a scotch bonnet pepper and allyl isothiocyanates in the freshly grated horseradish. These are two different chemicals that yield a similar fiery heat with a big impact at low concentrations. I'm of Jamaican heritage. We grew up eating them almost like candy. Freshly grated horseradish is extremely spicy compared to the prepared horseradish that Stephen used. Prepared horseradish has stabilizers like sodium benzoate, which is stable at low pH and extends the horseradish's shelf life in the presence of vinegar. It also helped to mute the heat in his Bloody Mary. Jeff made his own Pestishire sauce with blended roasted red peppers, Calabrian chili with oil, garlic, and anchovy paste, and fresh horseradish. The small amount of oil from the Calabrian chili needed to be emulsified in order to prevent the juice from separating. Thankfully, some of the proteins in the anchovy paste have emulsification properties. They help to keep Jeff's juice stable while adding a salty, briny flavor as well. There's fish in all Bloody Marys. Deal with it. Anchovy is an ingredient in Worcestershire sauce, which is a classic Bloody Mary addition. By including it, Jeff kept a traditional ingredient in his recipe, but in a non-traditional way. All three of our chefs used clear distilled spirits to retain the signature red color of their Bloody Marys. Stephen used tequila, which is distilled from agave, a succulent plant that resembles a cactus. The plant is rich in fructose, a sweet, simple sugar that adds to its characteristic flavor. It needs more tequila. Julie used vodka, which is made from a distilled starch, sometimes grains, sometimes potatoes, sometimes sugar beets. The source of the ferment substrate is not all that important since it's distilled and heavily filtered, resulting in a very neutral flavor. Using a simple vodka is an excellent choice because it allows the drink's other intense flavors to take center stage. I like Tito's because it's organic. I love the name Tito and it's vodka. Jeff infused his vodka with pink peppercorns and rosemary. Alcohol is an organic solvent and can extract some flavoring compounds from the rosemary and pink peppercorns to add layers of flavor to his Bloody Mary. Alcohol extraction is a slow process. Left alone, the infusion would take several days. Jeff chose to sous vide his ingredients, so the process only took a couple of hours. Amazing. Thank you, machine. Sous vide translates to under vacuum in French. It involves vacuum sealing ingredients in a bag and suspending them in a water bath at a constant temperature. This is maintained by an apparatus called an immersion circulator. It's a delicate way to infuse flavors into the vodka with moderate heat. Vodka is highly volatile, so this method adds flavor without having to cook the vodka. Cooking could alter the alcohol content as alcohol will evaporate under high temperatures. Steven used ice from his freezer, added his ingredients, stirred, and was good to go. Always make sure your ice is fresh, as it can pick up flavors from other foods if it gets too old. This is called flavor migration, and it's not very pleasant in ice. Julie added all of her ingredients with cubes of ice and gently shook everything in her cocktail shaker. The key to stabilizing a Bloody Mary is to make it cold. This slows chemical reactions that deteriorate color or cause cineresis, the separation or oozing of some compounds out of solution. Jeff muddled his cucumber, lemon wedges, and juice together first by mashing his ingredients against the bottom of the cocktail glass with a press or pestle. This damaged the cell walls and released volatile flavor molecules that were then partially recaptured when the infused vodka and ice were poured into his cocktail shaker. Jeff used ice shards, chisels from large clear ice blocks. Clear ice is completely transparent and means that few gases like oxygen and nitrogen were dissolved in his ice. It can also mean that there were fewer minerals like calcium, magnesium, or impurities like bacteria in the water. Bloody Marys are a complex concoction, but don't let that prevent you from making and enjoying this delicious cocktail. However you choose to customize your drink, we hope you'll take some of these tips from our three creative chefs.